Periodontitis, which is still often erroneously called periodontosis, is the official name for the abnormal inflammation of the periodontal apparatus. This inflammation invariably, and in most cases painlessly, leads to the loss of bone over the years. As can be seen in this animation, the result is loss of teeth. Not only do plaque and bacteria initiate caries, but they also cause inflammation of the periodontal apparatus, in effect the periodontium. First, inflammation of the gingiva and a gingival pocket develop. If plaque and bacteria are not effectively removed, then this inflammation leads to loss of bone, and bone pockets can develop also. Eventually, as periodontitis progresses, it develops its own dynamic, so that even if you change your brushing habits and start thoroughly removing plaque, you can no longer stop or slow the development of the disease. Thorough cleaning of the bone pockets is no longer possible. Therefore, it's important to always remove plaque thoroughly from the surface of the tooth. In case of protruding crown margins, protruding fillings, and malocclusions, this isn't possible. Even when employing an optimal cleaning technique, you won't be able to remove all the plaque and periodontitis will develop. More on the topic of artificial teeth in the video entitled Crown. Only a very small number of people suffer from genetically caused periodontitis. These people frequently lose their teeth at a young age. In these patients, periodontitis is caused by a defect in the immune system. In this image, the receding of the periodontal apparatus is clearly visible. The technical term for the black triangles between the teeth is, in fact, black spots. Dysfunctions in the masticatory system. Disorders of the general metabolism. Stress, alcohol, and tobacco abuse, as well as mechanical traumas, such as fillings that are too high, can also affect the course of the disease in a negative way. As a rule, periodontitis is a chronic disease. However, in some people it can also flare up intermittently. Acute symptoms such as severe purulent processes are rare and naturally are recognized more easily by the affected patient. Here you see a patient who had his upper teeth crowned several years ago. Since then he has intermittently experienced bleeding gums and gingival recession, otherwise known as periodontitis. Recently, the patient noticed a lump on the gingiva, or an acute pocket abscess. And the dentist eventually diagnoses periodontitis after an examination focusing on the periodontium. Thorough questioning and tests regarding oral hygiene, brushing, and the condition of the gingiva are indispensable for developing a treatment plan. These tests provide the dentist with information about plaque colonization, brushing quality, loss of supporting tissue, and the condition of the inflammation. All of this data must be documented accurately, because only then can the course of the disease be predicted. With the aid of special radiological images, bone deterioration is additionally illustrated. Areas of disturbances underneath the mucous membrane, for example in the form of deposits known as concretions, or perhaps protruding crown margins are identified. Based on the data obtained, a diagnosis is made and the required treatment is initiated. Periodontal treatment should not be confused with common oral hygiene. Oral hygiene is mostly employed for aesthetics and prophylaxis and should only be performed on healthy individuals. Thorough explanations of the disease and of the chosen treatment plan are very important because healing is only possible if the patient understands how individual aspects relate to one another. At the beginning of periodontal treatment, teeth that aren't worth preserving must be extracted. And necessary root canal treatments must be performed or redone. Afterwards, an intensive cleaning phase with special periodontal instruments takes place, as seen in the image here. During this initial cleaning phase, concretions and pocket tissue are removed. Furthermore, rough root surfaces are smoothed. This is done painlessly for the patient by means of a local anesthetic ointment. Such thorough cleaning can be very time-consuming because all surfaces of the roots must be cleaned. So the so-called initial treatment usually takes place in two or three sessions. Roughly two months after the last cleaning treatment, a re-evaluation takes place. 
The dentist waits eight weeks in order to allow the gingiva the necessary time to regenerate. During the re-evaluation, data is again collected and compared to the initial values, and the dentist is able to obtain an idea regarding the progression of the disease. The plaque and bleeding values will hopefully be around 20% by now. And excess tooth mobility that was initially present should have decreased. Furthermore, the probing depths should be clearly reduced. A word of caution at this point. The execution of a complete reevaluation only makes sense if the patient's hygiene indices are around 20%. When poor oral hygiene is at play, the patient will not experience optimal healing capacity. In the case of poor oral hygiene, the patient's basic treatment and motivation, for example here you see plaque disclosing tablets that aid in brushing, are continued as long as required in order to achieve necessary plaque control. The patient must demonstrate initiative and adjust his dental care at home in order to control the disease. Most periodontal diseases are chronic and therefore will accompany affected patients throughout their lives. A saliva test that determines the presence of bacterial flora in the gingival pockets should only be performed after the reevaluation concludes that the initial treatment objective wasn't achieved. Before that, the saliva test makes no sense because one thing is for sure before periodontal treatment is initiated. You have bacteria in those pockets. Otherwise, you wouldn't have the inflammation. Laser or phototoxic treatment is not a scientifically proven option in periodontal treatment. Nevertheless, this very expensive treatment course is frequently carried out. Surgical interventions, such as flap surgeries, should only be performed after conventional periodontal treatment and respective hygiene indices have been achieved. Because if there is no change in brushing behavior on behalf of the patient, then a renewed flaring up of the disease is guaranteed. If no reduction of the probing depths and no signs of activity are achieved despite improved oral hygiene on behalf of the patient, the physician should ask himself some of the following questions. Was the quality of the cleaning sufficient? Was the initial diagnosis correct? Does the patient have any thus far undetected systemic problems, such as latent diabetes, chronic infection, or perhaps the taking of specific medications? Are there any untreated local factors, such as massive malocclusions or anomalies of the teeth, or protruding filling in crown margins that might be adversely affecting the results? Do specific periodontal bacteria require a different systemic antibiotic treatment? The prognosis must be tailored to the individual patient and can only be beneficial if the respective disease is recognized early on and if necessary treatment actions are taken. However, with properly performed daily dental and oral care and regular dental checkups, nothing stands in the way of a positive result.